So what happens when you try to fix something and it turns out to be more of a project than you thought? Now it's not often that I have to buy equipment by using my favorite online sites, but sometimes it pays to keep an eye out for something you might want, and you never know, it may turn out to be a better deal than the first time you saw it. However, even if you get a great deal, not everything goes according to plan. In today's video, we're going to look at this leaf blower, and the problem is that it starts and runs, but it only runs for a little bit, and then it stops running. Now, I didn't have much information about it from the ad, and that's because this time I got it from the owner. They originally had the ad up to sell the blower, but after a couple of days, decided to give it away for free. The day we met up was when they told me that it starts in idles and would stop when being used. They also told me they had just replaced the purge bulb as well. Now, I'm going to try and repair this leaf blower, but yours might be a little different, so this might not work on yours. So if things are not working out for you, like in the video, please ask about it, and I'll be glad to answer your questions. Now, I don't typically like getting too much information about the stuff I'm going to fix because sometimes it just gets in the way of the diagnostic. But to be honest, the more information I can get will ultimately help in some way or another. After looking around the blower, it's in pretty good shape. The only thing I can tell right off the bat that's broken is the cruise control lever, but it's not necessary to have. Now, if I do want to replace it, it's less than $15, and we can buy it later on once we know the blower's worth fixing. Now the blower did come with some fuel in the tank, which can be a good thing, but also a bad thing. The reason it's good is because we can now test the blower the way the previous owner was testing it, and the reason it's bad is because we don't have any idea if the fuel is good. We also have to consider the work that was done by the previous owner as well, just in the off chance they may have made some sort of mistake. The next thing we need to do is to start it up, let it warm up, and see the issue it's having. Now, interestingly enough, the blower did exactly what they said it would do. Now, I could just start making adjustments to the fuel screws on the car, but, but I think we might be getting ahead of ourselves. I think the next thing we need to do is to look at the fuel that came with the blower and see if it's in good shape or if it's the cause of our issues. Now, right off the bat, it would appear there might be an issue with the fuel. Now, I don't like green two-stroke oil because it's hard to tell once the fuel starts to go stale if it's from the oil or from the gasoline that's causing it to look this dark. But once you look at it from the side of the jar, it becomes a bit more obvious as to what the issue might be. Now the first thing you'll notice is how dark the fuel is. You can't even see through it. But if you look at the bottom of the jar, you'll also notice a different color fluid at the bottom. Now this would be water. Now who knows how it got there, but most times it happens when a gasoline container was poorly stored over the months and collected moisture from the air. Otherwise the water can also come from the gas station's tank. Now since the fuel is out of the tank, we can take a peek at the filter just to make sure it's still connected to the fuel line. If the filter is not on the line and has broken off, it could mean the screen inside the carb is clogged and needs to be cleaned. Fortunately, ours is still connected, but we still might have to inspect the carb. The next thing we need to do is to put some fresh fuel in the tank, try starting it, and see if that fixes the issue, or if we need to go even further with the diagnostic. Uh-huh. 
so this time it stopped, but it didn't even have the engine at full speed. So even though there was water in the tank, it must have been at the very bottom of the tank and didn't make it into the fuel system. That means even though there was an issue with the fuel, it's not the cause for the engine stopping. There really is no way of getting around this, but we'll need to get to the carb and take it off the engine and inspect its condition. This is when we find yet another issue that I wasn't expecting, but unfortunately, it does happen from time to time. Now the air filter looks to be in great shape, however dirt is not the only thing that can clog it. If it's wet with water, fuel, or even oil, it could cause the engine to have a difficult time getting enough air to make any power. Now this one looks okay, but we may still get another one just as insurance. Now after taking off the air filter base, which also holds the purge bulb, is when we see the issue that I was afraid of. I know it's hard to see, but they have the short port connected to the return line that goes back to the tank, while the longer port is connected to the line that goes to the carb, which if you didn't know is backwards to the way it's supposed to be. Now mistakes happen and you have to be extra careful if it was made prior to you getting it, otherwise you could make the same mistake. Before I go on, I'm going to swap these two lines at the bulb, otherwise I'm going to forget to do it later on. So in the end, that means the longer port will be connected to the line that goes back to the tank as the return line, and then the shorter port is connected to the line that goes back to the carb. Now I know it's a bit soon, but I'm going to put fuel back into the tank so I can test the flow through the system. Now once the fuel is back in the tank, I'll then press the bulb and fuel should come up to the carb and then out of the carb and into the top line to the bulb, then fill the bulb and then leave through the return line and back to the tank. Now ours is doing just that so we'll move on to the carb now. Now it's been a few years since I've worked on one of these so I thought I was going to just release both fuel lines from the carb and then slide the carb off the studs but the throttle linkage won't let you do that. Unfortunately that means I have to remove the recoil and the side cover to be able to remove the linkage from the carb and then finally remove the carb from the engine. Now it's not ideal but they do make it to where doing this job is fairly easy. It would also seem that the previous owner might have forgotten to replace all the bolts for the recoil or they just got loose, backed out, and fell off the blower. That means I'll have to either replace all four bolts or just replace the two that are missing, but run into the chance that you have two different bolt heads to deal with if I can't find the same one that's already on here. Now once the side cover is gone, I can then easily remove the trigger and then work the linkage off the carb. Then I'll slide it off the engine and finally inspect it. While I have the cover off, I'm also going to clean any dirt that might still be in here. It's not necessary, but it doesn't take all that much time to do either. If you have to clean near the intake for the engine, just be careful not to get any water inside it. Now while the cover is off, this would be a great time to get to the muffler and the spark arrestor screen. The reason is because there's a plastic cover that protects the muffler and you can only get to the muffler once the side cover has been removed. Now the job of the spark arrestor screen is to keep sparks from coming out of the muffler and starting a fire, but if the screen gets clogged, it would also cause the engine to not get to full power. This one is clear, so I'll just replace it and then give the pieces I took off a quick cleaning. Now there's no real point in cleaning these pieces, but if I have the time, I do try my best to get rid of any dirt. Now while I have the opportunity, I'm also going to apply some lube to the spring and post for the starter pawls, just to make sure they don't have any issues in the future. After that, we can finally start taking the carb apart, and I like to start with the pumping section. Now there is some debris sitting on the screen, but it's not too bad. However, we will need to try and clean it, but only after we get the metering diaphragm off the carb for an inspection. Now the metering diaphragm is supposed to be soft and flexible, that way it can easily move to work against the rocker arm that's underneath it. However, this one is beginning to harden, which means it's not going to be able to do its job the way it's supposed to. That would also explain why the engine was acting the way that it was. If I had to rate this diaphragm, I would say it was in poor condition and definitely needs to be replaced. Otherwise, if you didn't replace it, you're going to have a hard time using this blower. One of the things I've started doing to help clean these carbs is to remove the fuel adjustment screws, but before I can take them out, I want to see how many turns it takes to bottom them out. To do that, I'm going to turn them clockwise and find out how many turns it takes to get them to stop. Then I can take them out. After that, I can then carefully remove the needle and rocker arm and its tiny spring. Once these are out of the carb, I can then safely clean the screen with carb cleaner. If you don't have carb cleaner, you can try using something else. However, I can't guarantee that it's going to work. 
Just be very careful when taking out these tiny parts because it's very easy to lose them. That's one of the only reasons why I would recommend to anyone who just wants to get their stuff running and not have to hassle with the more aggravating parts of having to take these tiny carbs apart and clean every part of it. Now I do worry about using an ultrasonic cleaner though. I'm always worried that the dirt from some other part of the carb will dislodge and then get stuck somewhere else. It's not supposed to be. Otherwise I'd go out and get one right now. But by the end of this video I may have to make up my mind sooner than later about getting one. After you're done cleaning everything, spray some carb cleaner into the pocket for the screen and make sure it disappears through it. If it does, then you can start to reassemble the carb. If not, you'll have to keep cleaning the screen until it does. Just be very careful when putting the parts back in. If you thought they were tough to get out without losing them, just wait till you have to put them back in. After that, make sure the rocker arm moves like it's supposed to, then you can put the fuel adjustment screws back on. Once they stop, then turn them back out the same number of turns you counted earlier. So when buying my metering diaphragms, I'm only concerned about the stem in the middle. They can either be long or short, and this one happens to be the short one. I also buy them in bulk, that way they are very inexpensive. If you had to buy a single diaphragm, then it could be as much as $7, but for a few dollars more, you could get several of them. Now I haven't talked about the pumping diaphragm, but to be honest, the type of material this one is made of rarely has any issues, but that's not a guarantee either. Now with the carb finally back together, I'm now ready to reinstall it back onto the engine. What's real strange is that the fuel lines look to be almost new and yet the carb was untouched. It's a shame, but why do all this work and not replace the carb? Now the carb kit for this blower, which includes the carb, air filter, lines, tank grommet, and purge bulb is only $14. This is a very small price to pay to get this blower working again, but the alternative was to just give the blower away and then buy a new gas or battery blower. Now I obviously don't have any say in what you do, but if it was me and I wanted this repair to be as simple as possible, I would have just replaced the carb. So if that's how I feel, then why aren't I doing that right now? Well, I'm extremely cheap, so I'm always ready to replace a metering diaphragm for just a dollar and also use a bit of carb cleaner before shelling out $14. Besides, I find this a lot more rewarding. However, you're going to soon realize that even I get it wrong sometimes. What you just saw me do was to use some carb cleaner on the post and the spring for the recoil assembly. I found it to be a bit irregular when pulling on it. Now I have been known to use a lubricant to do the same thing in my past videos. However, I've now moved on to just cleaning any dirt and oil from the spring. It just seems to work out better in the long run. But if you want to use a lubricant, then go for it. But for me, I'll be doing it this way until I find a better way. Now you can take it apart and do a deep clean if you want to, but it's not always necessary. It's finally time to start this blower and see if all that work we did was even worth it. Now it is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit out here, so it is a bit cold. We'll try it again and hopefully it'll stay running this time. If not, we'll make a few adjustments. Now since it's stopping while the carb is still half choked, I'm going to guess it wants more fuel from the carb, and since it's not wanting to idle, I'm going to adjust the L screw, which is the one closer to the engine. To start off with, I'm going to turn it counterclockwise a quarter turn, and if it needs more fuel, I'm going to turn it a quarter turn at a time.
Well, after making a slight increase in fuel delivery at idle speed, the engine kept running. After that, I then let the engine warm up and then made adjustments to the H screw, but it turns out I pretty much put it back right where it started at. It sounded okay, but once I turned it off and took it over to the leaf pile, it was not having a good time. It seems to be down on power because it seems to be running with some sort of an ignition miss or some sort of carb issue. Now I did use it on a different day and it seemed to be doing a lot better, but after I turned it off and moved it to another area to use, it did the exact same thing. So there's something definitely going on here. I'm not really sure what to do about it, but in the next video we're going to dig into it a little deeper and see if we can figure out what's wrong with it. So my question is, what do you think might be wrong with it? Do you think it needs a new spark plug? Maybe the compression is a little low. Do you think the ignition coil needs to be regapped? What about some water getting inside the engine? Or do you think there might be a carb issue? Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects. And I hope to see you in the next video.